Hello, welcome to Yoga with Subhash. In today's video, I will be presenting a, a 30 minute sequence to work on the knees. So let's get started. Let's begin by sitting with the legs stretched out in front. And we'll start with a few very gentle knee rotations. Let's start with the right leg. Fold the knee, hold the back of the thigh with the two hands, lift the foot up, bring the knee close to the chest and begin to create rotational movements at the knee joint. So creating a large circular rotation, only engaging the knee, not the hip in this exercise. Keeping the rotation smooth, continuous. As you continue the rotation, try to stretch the foot in all directions. After about six to eight rotations in one direction, just pause briefly and then we'll reverse the direction of the rotation now. Other direction, again, keep the engagement only for the knees, not the hips. And making a large circular movement with the foot so you can exercise the knee muscles, knee joints. Do about six to eight rotations in this direction, then pause. And finally release. Just relax for a moment. Let's switch sides now. So lift the left leg up, hold the back of the thigh with the two hands, lift the knee and bring it in close to the chest and start creating circular rotations at the knee joint. Again, trying to make a big circle with the foot being stretched in every direction. Smooth and continuous rotation of the foot. And do about six to eight rotations in one direction, then pause. And then reverse the direction and do a few rotations in this direction now. Again, keep the movement only to engage the knee joints, not the hip area. And making a large circle with the foot going in every direction. Again, after about six to eight movements, pause. And finally release and relax for a brief moment. And now we'll come to a standing position and do a couple of rounds of the sun salutation routine, Surya Namaskar. So come up close to the top of the mat, feet together, exhale, palms together, inhale, stretch the arms in front, raise them up, pull the hands up and push them back, push the arms behind the ears. And as you exhale, begin to bend forward. Pull the hands away. Finally, drop the hands. Try and get the hands closer to the toes. Now bend the knees, palms on the floor. Try to align the fingertips with the toes. And then bring the left foot back. Slide it back. And then place the knee, left knee down to the floor. Lift the chest up. Let's bring the right leg back and get into the downward facing dog. Buttocks lifted up toward the ceiling. You try and press the heels down to the floor. You can look at your knees or your feet. You bring the knees to the floor, chest and chin down to the floor. Slowly release the abdomen to the floor. Lift the head up, chest up. Try and lift the palms off the floor as well as the legs off the floor. Make an effort to lift the chest higher, legs higher, keeping the legs straight. Now release, palms down, go back to the downward facing dog. Buttocks up, try and press the heels down. Lift the head up, bring the left foot forward all the way up between the palms. 
Place the right knee on the floor, lower the buttocks and lift the chest up. Lift the head up slightly, bring the right foot forward all the way up between the palms. Just relax for a moment, bending forward, trying to bring the palms close to the toes, chest close to the thighs. Lift the head up, stretch the arms straight out in front against the ears, body in the shape of the capital letter L. And then as you inhale, start stretching up, pull the hands up, push the arms back. And then as you exhale, straighten the body and release the arms down. Relax for a breath or two. This will be second round. Feet together. Exhale, palms together. And this time as you inhale, bring the arms out to the side and then stretch up. Pull the hands up and push the arms back behind the ears. As you exhale, begin to bend forward. Keep the hands pulled away initially. Finally, drop the hands, bring them behind the back. Join the hands and interlock the fingers behind you. Roll the shoulders back. And then as you inhale, pull the hands up away from you toward the ceiling. And as you exhale, you may attempt to drop the chest closer to the thighs. Now release the hands, bend the knees, palms down, right foot back. We'll get into this pose called the warrior two. So the body at this point is facing the side wall, completely parallel to the side wall. Spread the arms out horizontal. Look over the left shoulder. In this position, the right foot is flat on the ground, right leg is straight, front knee is bent. The front foot, the left foot is facing the, the top edge of the mat. And as you inhale, pull the hands away from each other. As you exhale, try to lower the buttocks down. The left knee should end up vertically above the ankle. And the left thigh is close to being horizontal. Knee bent close to 90 degrees. And now we're going to release the hands and stretch both the legs straight now. So the left leg is also straight. Point the toes toward the two corners of the mat. And then begin by bending the left knee. Keep the right leg straight. Place the left hand on your left thigh or left knee. And as you bend the left knee, make the effort to close the gap between the left hip and the left heel. So make the effort to drop the buttocks down so that the left hip gets closer and closer to the left heel. At this point, keeping the torso very straight, we are not trying to bend forward. Release the hands and join the palms together. And continue the effort to lower the hip down closer to the left heel. So lower the buttocks down. Drop the hip down to the heel. And then slowly come back up. Turn the body to face the front. Bend the knee, palms down. Left foot back. Downward facing dog. Lift the buttocks up. Press the heels down close to the floor. Bring the knees to the floor and buttocks all the way back to get into the child pose. Balasana. Buttocks resting on the heels, forehead on the floor, and then just to get a good stretch, try and walk your hands away from you. Without shifting the position of the hands, keeping the forehead close to the floor, smoothly, slowly, slide the body forward to get into the cobra pose. Cobra is where you will lift the chest up, but keep the navel down on the floor. Elbows are bent close to the body. Shoulders are rolled back. Chest up, navel down. Cobra, Bhujangasana. Push with the palms down to get back to the downward facing dog. Lift the head up, right foot forward. 
Bring the foot between the palms and we'll get ready again for the warrior two on this side. So come up with the body completely parallel to the side of the room. The front knee is bent. The left leg that's behind you is very straight. Foot flat. Turn the right foot facing the top edge of the mat. Arms horizontal. Look over the right shoulder and as you inhale, pull the hands away from each other. As you exhale, drop the buttocks down. The right knee vertically above the ankle, eventually bringing the right knee close to 90 degrees, right thigh almost parallel to the floor. And now release the hands. Straighten the right leg as well. Both the legs are straight. Turn the toes to point in the direction of the two corners of the mat. Place the right hand on your right knee and start lowering the buttocks down. So the right knee is bent. The back leg, the left leg is very straight. And keep the torso upright, but continue the effort to bring the right hip closer and closer to the right heel and feel a nice deep stretch on the right knee here as you lower the buttocks down and at this point keeping the torso still straight and vertical release the hands join the palms together and continue the effort to roll the buttocks down so the right hip comes closer to the right heel and finally release, come back up, face the front by turning the body to the right, bend the knee, palms down, left foot forward, feet together and we bending forward into the Uttanasana. Try and bring the chest close to the thighs. Now swing the arms out to the side as you inhale, slowly begin to stretch up. As you bring the arms all the way up, keep the torso vertical and bend the knees now. We'll get into the pose called the Utkatasana. So here the knees are bent, torso is straight and vertical, point the hands up toward the ceiling. Stay there for a moment. And now stretch the arms straight out in front and with the feet together start lowering the buttocks down all the way down to get into a squat. Now here the effort is to bring the heels to the floor. The feet are still together but if that's not comfortable you can position a cushion or a pillow under your heels so you can rest the heels on the pillow or the cushion and get a nice deep knee stretch in the process. And now slowly as you inhale begin to come back up, straight up. This time raise the arms up and push them backwards. Bend back slightly, arch. And as you exhale straighten the body and release the arms down. Just relax for a moment, do some simple knee rotations. So bend the knees, place the palms on your knees, pick one direction and start rotating the knees in one direction. So remember the knees remain bent throughout and we're trying to create a nice knee rotation in one direction, a few rounds, maybe six to eight rounds in one direction. Smooth movement, knees remain bent throughout. Then pause, do a few rotations in the other direction. Keep the hands on your knees, knees are bent and rotating the knees in the other direction. And again after six to eight Rotations, pause and stretch the legs up straight now. Just relax for a moment.
And now we'll do this pose called the virtual chair. So you can spread the feet apart, shoulder width apart, maybe a little wider. And place the elbows on your knees, lower the buttocks down to the level of the knees. So it's like a squat or a, or a virtual chair position. The thighs are roughly parallel to the floor, buttocks are at the same level at the knees. And then stay there for a moment, keep breathing and soon you, you can start feeling a nice stretch on the knees, the hips and the ankles. And now slowly release the buttocks all the way down into a full squat. Try to keep the heels on the ground. If that's not comfortable as before, put a, a cushion or a blanket, a folded blanket under your heels. And then stay there for a few breaths. And once again, get back up to the virtual chair. Bring the buttocks at the same level as the knees. And this time we'll make the, this chair a little rocking chair. Gently move the knees backwards and forwards. Make the effort to keep the movement back and forth, not up and down. So the buttocks don't move up and down, only the knees are moving forward and backward. Again, deepening the stretch on the knees as well as the ankles. When you cannot continue anymore, you can lower the buttocks down one more time into a full squat. Stay there for a few breaths now. And now slowly come back up to a standing position. Relax for a moment. And let's do another simple movement here. So bring the feet apart, toes pointing exactly 180 degrees apart, and the heels are together. So join the heels together, toes pointing away on each side, 180 degrees apart. Spread the arms out horizontal, bend the knees, and gently, without stretching the legs straight, keep the knees bent, and then move, do a little pumping move up and down. So moving the, the buttocks up and down slowly. Keep the knees bent throughout. Do this a few rounds. And then come back up. Relax. Release the hands and relax for a moment. And now we'll do this movement, which has now become popularly known as the Super Brain Yoga. Some of you may recall, if you are from India, this used to be done as a, as a punishment in early elementary school days. So again, keep the feet apart, almost shoulder width apart. With the left hand, softly hold the right earlobe. And with the right hand, softly hold the left earlobe. Inhale here. As you exhale, without bending forward, lower the body into a full squat. Pause briefly. As you inhale, come back up to a standing position. Again, try to avoid bending forward when you're moving up and down. Pause after inhalation. And again, as you exhale, lower the buttocks all the way down into a squat. Pause. As you inhale, come back up straight. Pause. And continue for a few more rounds. It's now popularly known as the Super Brain Yoga. And there's a lot of research going on. Or people have done a lot of research on this movement. And they claim that it helps improve your memory, it helps calm your mind down, 
makes your mind sharper, etc., etc. Lots of benefits are identified. Do this for a few rounds, only as much as comfortable. And as you finish the next round, finish the final inhalation, come back up to a standing position. And then just release the hands, relaxed, natural rhythm of breathing for a moment. Okay, now we'll sit down, comfortable, cross leg for a moment, just relax. And again, we'll do a gentle knee and hip rotation now. So, stretch the legs out straight in front first. We'll start with the right leg. So, fold the right knee, place the foot on top of the left thigh, all the way up and back. And then you can thread the fingers, the left hand fingers through the toes. Place the right hand on your right knee. Push the knee forward and away from you. Press it down, pull it all the way back and lift it up. And continue this movement. It's like a rotational movement at the hip joint. And again, engaging the knee as well as the hip here. So the movement is forward, down, back and up. Nice and smooth rotational movement at the hip joint. Do this a couple more times in one direction. And then pause. Reverse the direction now. So lift the foot up, pull it all the way back. Then move it forward, press it down and lift it up and back. So this is a, again that same hip rotation movement in the opposite direction engaging both the hip and the knee in this beautiful movement. And now slowly stop, pause briefly, let's do a little butterfly movement here. Keep the foot still on the thigh and use the right hand to gently Move the knee up and down, right knee up and down into a half butterfly movement. Again, engaging the hip and the knee as you try and bring the knee closer and closer to the floor. If you're comfortable with the knee coming to the floor, you can even strike the knee hard against the floor, which will help you improve the blood circulation in the area. And then just pause, stretch the leg straight. I will switch sides now. So place the left foot on top of the right thigh, all the way back. Place the left hand on your left knee. Push the knee forward, down to the floor, pull it all the way back, lift it up high. And again, creating that nice circular hip rotation, engaging both the knee and the hip. Continue in this rotational movement for a three, three or four more movements in this direction and then at the end of the next move pause let's reverse the direction if the knee up push it back down and forward and continue this rotational movement for a few more rounds keep breathing and finally pause I will again do that half butterfly. So make the effort to push the knee down repeatedly toward the floor. So use the left hand, push the knee down. Keep the torso straight. We are not bending forward or sideways. Again, if your knee is able to get to the floor, you can make the effort to strike it hard against the floor. And then we'll pause. Stretch the leg out straight. Just relax for a couple of breaths here. And we'll lie down on the back now. Just relax for two or three breaths on your back. We'll do this movement, movement which is a variation of the Pavana Muktasana, wind releasing pose. It's called the figure four movement. So let's begin by bending the knees, bring the heels very close to the buttocks, 
We we'll start with the right leg. Lift the right foot up and place the foot on top of the thigh, opposite thigh. Slide it down all the way, very close to the groin area or the joint. Now with the two hands, hold the left shin. Lift the foot up and hold the shin as you exhale. Lift the head up. Try and lower the chin down and guide the knee to the forehead. You can start feeling a nice stretch on the, on the knee, hip and the ankle. And then slowly bring the head back to the floor and bring the foot, slide it up to the top of the thigh, ankled on the knee now. This time thread the arm from under the leg and again hold the shin with the two hands. Same effort as you exhale, lift the head up, lower the chin down to the chest and make an effort to gently guide the knee, this time the left knee, in the direction of your forehead. Slightly different experience of the stretch. Maybe you feel a little more engagement of the knee in this position compared to the previous one. And slowly release the head down, release the legs down, and pause briefly. When you're ready, we'll switch sides. So place the left foot on top of the right thigh, slide the foot all the way down, heel, heel coming in contact with the groin area, all the way down to the joint. Again, use the hands to hold the right shin this time. And lift the head up, lower the chin down to the chest and make a gentle effort to guide the knee closer to the forehead. Keep breathing, stay there for a moment and then slowly bring the head down, back to the floor. And this time slide the foot all the way up the thigh, placing the ankle on the knee this time. And then this time bring the arm from under the leg, hold the shin again with the two hands, lift the head up, lower the chin down to the chest and guide the knee in the direction of the forehead. Gentle effort, keep breathing and stay there for a moment, maybe three or four breaths. And then slowly bring the head back down to the floor. Release the legs and relax for a moment. And gently roll to one side and come back up to a sitting position. The final move that we want to try is called the tiptoe pose, tiptoe balancing pose actually, but we may not be doing the balancing part just to engage the knees. Come up on the toes and then some of you may need the help of the wall to get into this pose. And you can watch and if you're not comfortable without the support, you can always rest your back against the wall and then try this move. It's a little more challenging move, but just make the best effort if you can to try this pose. So I'm going to start with my right leg. You can use your right hand for support on the right side of the body. Slide your right foot in front and then with the left hand grab the big toe or the foot and place it on top of the, of the left thigh as far back as you can on the thigh. And you can keep using the hands for support on the ground. And now to engage the knee a little more, we're going to start making up and down movement with the right knee. So moving it up and down. See if you can touch the knee to the floor or as close to the floor as you can with each movement. Do this three or four times and finally see if you can rest the knee on the ground. It's actually a balancing pose for which I am not very comfortable, but I can give a try to maintain balance. We'll bring the palms together in the prayer position and stay there for whatever duration you're comfortable. 
and finally release the pose, come back to the tiptoe position, sitting on your toes, pause briefly and we'll switch sides. So keep the left hand on the floor on the left side, use the right hand to grab the left foot and position it on top of the right thigh all the way back. And now again using the two hands for support on the ground, make the effort to move the knee up and down. Smooth movement, you move it down, see if you can get it to the floor or get it close to the floor. Do this two or three more times. And when you're ready, you can place the knee down to the floor if you're comfortable. If not, of course, don't bother. That's okay. And if you're able to bring the knee to the floor, stay there for a moment. And as we did on the other side, like I said, this is a balancing pose. I'm again going to give it a try. I'm not very comfortable with this balance yet. So try and bring the palms together and stay in this balancing pose for a brief moment. Deep knee engagement in the process. And finally release. Come down and sit with the eyes closed in any comfortable cross leg position for a moment now. Just gently reflecting back on our sequence so far today. I thank you for being a part of this practice to engage the knees in our movements. I hope you enjoyed the practice. I would welcome any feedback or comments on the sequence that you just practiced. And I would love to see you back for a future video. Namaste and have a wonderful rest of the day.